guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Susie and this is I Run Things. And in this video, I'm going to give you a few tips that I wish I had known before I ran the New York City Marathon. Hopefully I'm giving you tips you haven't heard anywhere else. I know there's a lot of videos out there with suggestions and recommendations and tips on how to execute and run the New York City Marathon, but hopefully you haven't heard these tips yet. So here are the ones that would have helped me run the marathon with more confidence and more efficiently. Okay, so let's dig right in. Tip number one. Hopefully, when you chose your modes of transportation to the start line, you chose the Staten Island Ferry. Why? Well, the Staten Island Ferry is where it's at. It's the most iconic. You're going to have the opportunity to take pictures. You're going to have plenty of room to sit down, walk a little bit if you're feeling antsy. You're just going to have a lot more room and a lot more space and access to bathrooms as well. There's bathrooms when you hop on the ferry at the um, arrival to the ferry station. And then there's bathrooms again at the end. And there's bathrooms as well in the ferry itself. That's number one reason why I recommend everybody take the ferry. Number two, you're gonna be able to get drinks. There are coffee shops and vending machines at the ferry station in Manhattan when you hop on it. So you're going to be able to buy any last minute items that you think you wish to have while you are on the ferry or while you hop on the buses at the other side. That is why I recommend people take the ferry. It's just much more convenient and it's nicer and it's more scenic and you can take it down of pictures. So start your marathon experience the right way hopping on the Staten Island Ferry. Once you get off of the Staten Island Ferry, you will get routed to the buses. Fret not, there are plenty of buses. There's a ton of them. You're not going to have to wait a long time. If you're going in a group, I would recommend you kind of gauge the amount of people waiting in line so that you can get on the same bus with your teammates if you're running in a large group. If you're running four or five, it's going to be easier to hop all together in the same bus but if you're in a large group i was part of a large large group it was like 30 of us so we basically took over one full bus that's what we did we kind of held back and we started the line on the next bus so that we could all get on that one together so that's another tip i have for you again there's a lot of buses and they come every like three four minutes so there's no rush for you to run and get on the first bus so you see there's more coming they're really comfortable coach buses as well and there is a bathroom at the end of the bus so if you need to use the bathroom again there's one right there i know that when you're going to be running a marathon some of us get very antsy and feel like we need to go to the bathroom constantly so you will have another opportunity there once you get off of the bus and that trip for us took probably one of i want to say 30 minutes so it's kind of a long trip from where the ferry arrives at Staten Island and Fort Wordsworth, which is where you will kind of be able to rest before you go to your corral. That's 30 to 35 minutes. When you get off of the buses, you are going to see that they're going to be checking for security reasons. There's a lot of police presence, okay? This is a highly, highly secure and safe marathon. They care about the runners, okay? So they are going to be checking you again with a um, one of those, you know, sticks that check for you to have no medals. You're gonna have to do it like this and they might actually check again if they notice that there's something that beeps. So be prepared for that because they may hold you back at that point. Now, if you're carrying a selfie stick, I recorded the whole marathon and I had a selfie stick. I don't think I have it here, I don't. My selfie stick was plastic. Now is still the time if you wanna run with a selfie stick, they're not going to accept anything that's metal. So you are going to beep and they're going to get rid of your selfie stick and throw it away. Don't ruin your filming if you're planning on filming the marathon. Buy on Amazon a plastic selfie stick and utilize that. This, the plastic is not going to beep and it's not strong enough to really damage anybody. So they will let you go through with that. They let me through with my selfie stick and it was just a plastic short thing. Be mindful of that. Don't get upset if you have to get rid of things that you have then and there the police are there to protect you protect the safety of all the runners 
So they're not going to let you go through with things that could trip other runners or injure other runners or yourself. Once you get to Fort Wadsworth, there's going to be um, sort of standing like big banners where you're going to be able to take pictures. My recommendation, take as many pictures as you want. At that point, you're there and you're going to be there waiting for a while. So don't get antsy because you have plenty of time to take pictures. Now, my recommendation is take whatever pictures you want, proceed to follow everybody, whatever is going, you're just going to go uphill a little bit. And to your left, you're going to take a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful picture. If you're paying attention, just go up. There's like a green area, green grass area. There's going to be people laying down there on blankets, which you can do as well, but just get yourself there and have someone take a picture of you with the Verrazano Bridge in the back. It's an amazing picture. I have it and it's a great recommendation that a friend gave me. So we took pictures there and it was just great to post on social media. So don't forget to do that. Once you take your picture at the village, start village area, there's going to be hot water. So ideally, if you bring tea, if you're one of those people who like tea or anything, you can actually ask for hot water, put your tea and drink your tea if you want to. They're going to have bagels. They're going to have bananas. This start line is bar none, the best start line I have had the pleasure of actually being at. I've run major marathons and there's nothing that compares to the New York City Marathon start line. It's just phenomenal. There's a medical tent. They can give you Gatorade. They can give you water. They have coffee. They have donuts. Another thing that I recommend must do, Dunkin' Donuts is always there giving those funny hats that are, let's say Dunkin' and they are made specially for the New York City Marathon. The one that I have has a stamp that says New York City Marathon 50th anniversary, which is great. And I actually ran, it was a pretty warm day last year for the 50th anniversary, but I ran with it in my hand till I saw my husband and my son on mile 17, I think it was. And I gave it to them and I told them, don't you dare get rid of it. So I still have it and it's just a great memento of a race. And honestly, when people ask me about it, I have to say, if you want a hat like this, you have to run New York City Marathon. Even makes it more extra special. You're going to know exactly when to move to your corral because they're going to let you know. They have speakers and they have the messaging going out in all these different languages, which makes it, again, for a really nice experience. It's the only marathon I've run where they say all these different messages in French, Italian, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese. It's just so cool to just soak in that experience of international runners. The 50th anniversary actually was kind of a weird one because international um, runners were not allowed into the United States yet because of COVID. So it was mainly run by people who were already in the United States. Any other edition of the New York City Marathon is going to be phenomenal in that aspect. You're going to hear all these other people talking in different languages and it just makes it for a really nice experience. Again, just soak it all in because this marathon is extra, extra special. Okay, once you are moving towards your corral, you're going to be able to discard of whatever clothing you have that's extra. That's another point that I have for you. Don't be scared of bringing extra items of clothing because you're going to be able to discard of them right before going into your corral and you're going to be able to deposit them into these um, big large bins and there's also volunteers just picking them up. So if they see you taking off something, they're going to ask you, are you discarding of this? And then they, they're going to take it from you and put it in this bag. They're going to be walking through the corral like that. So you can always discard of it last minute. There's also so many porta potties throughout the village and the corrals. You're going to have an opportunity to, even when you're waiting, pretty much right before starting here in the national anthem, you're going to be able to use the bathroom again. I used it at the very last minute, right before walking through the fence and going into my corral. So just go ahead and do that because you're going to be able to. One thing, they check your corral segment. You can always fall back, but you cannot go to a corral that's faster than your expected finish time. And then guys, off you go. You start running the New York City Marathon, the king of all the marathons. And this is my most important tip, probably whatever pace you thought you were going to keep, make it 15 seconds slower. Start slow. This marathon is a beast. It's not super, super steep. It doesn't have huge hills. However, they accumulate. They're going to kill your legs. 
probably the New York City Marathon is the first seven miles are easy peasy. They're completely flat except for the Verrazano Bridge at the beginning. But after that, you're going to be pretty flat. So you're not going to feel the exhaustion till later in the race. But once it hits you, it's going to be bad, guys. I have spoken with many people who have run the New York City Marathon. It surprises everybody. Like the hills seem to be reproducing. Like you go over one hill and then there's another one. It's like never ending hills. Again, they're not tremendous hills, but they keep coming. So you never get a respite after mile seven. Save energy for the end. Once you pat, you get to the Bronx, that's when you're really gonna, everything is gonna hit you with a vengeance. Right after that, it's Manhattan again, and it's Central Park. It's Fifth Avenue, it's Central Park. And then that's it, guys. You're almost at the finish line. My suggestion, try and soak it all in. Not many people are fortunate enough to run the New York City Marathon. You are going to be one of them, so just Focus on the experience. There's going to be so many people cheering you on on Fifth Avenue and Central Park. It's just incredible. It's just such an amazing experience. So no matter how much in pain you are, no matter how much you're cramping, try and concentrate on the experience that it is to run one of the six majors and just such an amazing, incredible marathon. I mean, I am so jealous right now that you get to run it and I am going to be at home. <laughs> so yeah, just soak it all in. Okay, and then once you cross the finish line, which, you know, when you see Shalane Flynn again in that phenomenal, I can't remember which year it was, I think it was 2018 maybe, she won the New York City Marathon. She was flying through like the last 400 meters. Guys, it's usually not the way it happens for recreational runners. So it's going to seem like it's forever because it's just a straight line. There's a turn. And then once you're there, it's a straight line. And those are probably the longest 500 meters of your life. At least they were for me. Seems like they are like picking up the finish line and making it further from you. It's like a mirage. So again, so get all in. You're going to hear the people from the bleachers just screaming and all the like excitement and you're going to be almost there. And then the announcers are like blasting music and saying people's names as they cross the finish line. Finish line is humongous. It's really, really big. So it fits a lot of runners. There's video at the end that you're going to be able to rewatch. So don't be like me. I have a face of like suffering. Like I am, I was in terrible pain, but I was suffering there at the end. Just to smile. It doesn't take that much to just smile. Put your arms up in the air and just it this is an incredible incredible accomplishment because the New York City Marathon is a very very hard marathon so be proud of yourself and before you cross that finish line remember to smile big and put your hands your arms up in the air because you did it and once you are there at the end you're gonna get your medal you're gonna get your baggie with food and Gatorade and water they gave us a big bottle of Gatorade. I've never seen anything this big, not even in a supermarket. They were like almost a liter. It was really big. And then they give you a big bottle of water as well. And they give you, at least in my case, they gave me an apple and a bagel and some other knickknacks in there. I think there was a cereal bar as well. It's a really nice bag with food, food and water and Gatorade or Powerade. I don't know if it was Gatorade or Powerade, but some electrolyte. A drink and then after that you're gonna keep walking and they are going to give you this this is the reason why we ran the New York City Marathon one of the reasons this is the poncho that they give you at the very end it's super warm and it protects you against the wind and the way that they give it to you is so nice because the volunteers are there and they put it on you like this and it almost feels like they are crowning like a, a knight or something, it's like they put it on you and they wrap you in and you're there and you're like, oh, thank you so much. It's just so, I get emotional just thinking about it. It is just incredible. Um, and then once you're out of there, they route you out and there's um, the subway is really close by so you're, you're not gonna have to walk a long time to get to the, to the subway station and then from there you get everywhere. So hopefully you don't have to go too far to get home and take a shower, but yeah. This is amazing. It's like such nice quality. They're all the same. I'm going to put it on, use, on me so you guys can see it. But yeah, 
they you don't have to move at all they put it on you and it's they do it for everybody and they they have volunteers just doing this so it has velcro here i don't think you can see it but yeah so it's this and then they even put the thing on you it tends to be cold in new york city in november so yeah they put this on you and you are like in absolute heaven okay guys so these were my tips for you to have a phenomenal new york city marathon i hope you rock this marathon you are so blessed I mean, I am so jealous right now that you're doing this. I can't wait to run it again. New York City Marathon is actually my PR. It's the best marathon I've ever run, even with the hills and with the torture that it was going through the hills and how much in pain I was at the finish line. But I would do this again any minute. It's just such an amazing, amazing race. And this is it, you guys. I hope these tips helped you. I hope you didn't hear this any other place. And if you like videos like this one, give it a thumbs up. Share with your friends and subscribe for more. Subscribe here on my face. Here are two other videos that might interest you. Run fearlessly, guys. Bing!